Okay, uh, welcome back. We are in topic 7.6. This is evidence, evidence of evolution. I had you guys uh, at the beginning of these evolution videos make a claim. Right? I had you guys put some evidence for it and also write some reasoning why this evidence backed up this claim. Right? Um, I'd like you to really examine that as we go through this and see if I've addressed any of your concerns. Uh, or if you are one of those that claim that evidence is not something that is and always has been occurring in life on Earth, I would like to know your if, if your evidence threshold has been reached by what I'm trying to convince you of. Okay, so the first uh, piece of evidence that I want to talk about when we talk about evidence for evolution is the fossil record. Um, if you look down here, there's some fossils here, there's some trilobites from a long time ago. I have a picture down here of the Grand Canyon where you can see, if you look at these lines, these individual strata, these strata throughout there. Um, these are geological layers, as you can kind of see in this uh, kind of more uh, cartoonish image here on the left. We have these different layers which have been laid down over time, in which we have at the bottom layer, and that occurred millions of years ago, right? And this moves all the way up to not very long ago. Not long ago, right? Um, and of course, these layers are still forming, but it takes a while for this sediment to, uh, to, to, to deposit and to leave behind these, uh, you know, these fossils. Now, it's important to note that fossils are not all, not everything we, that dies is stored in fossil form, right? It's kind of a difficult occurrence to happen, but when you have a ton of life, fossils can form. Um, and this is good because it allows us to analyze how life changed over time, right? So you can see we have down here at the bottom in this cartoonish image, we have these trilobites, you know, call this organism one. It survived whatever occurred at this point. We have organism one here. We have a different organism here. We'll call it organism two. Right? Something happens, we don't see two anymore. Now we see organism three dominating for a while over here, for a few of these rock layers, right? Well, organism four. So we can go all the way up. Right? But what you notice is that uh, you're going to see some of these lines throughout these rock layers cut off uh, at a certain point. Some of them will continue through quite a bit um, and eventually probably cut off. Right? Um, but we, see that we can see kind of a life history of all these different organisms and how they might have evolved. Right? Um, you can see similarities between organisms down here and organisms up here. Uh, or from organisms down here and organisms up here and from organisms all the way at the bottom, so all the way at the top, you can see some similarities in some of these organisms. This kind of, uh, you know, indicates to us that there is some sort of common ancestry, right, as we look at similarities between organisms that existed millions of years ago and those that, you know, succeeded those um, all the way up these rock strata. Uh, so just something to keep in mind um, that this is something that you can actually go out and see if you want. If you wanted to go visit the Grand Canyon or really, uh, there's many places in Texas go to a place in Glen, called Glen Rose, Texas. You can find a lot of fossils and you can see these, these rock strata and you'll find, you can find fossils all over the place, really. Um, uh, so, lot, you know, it's pretty common to find fossils. Um, it, 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 and it's really nice when you have this, this kind of history that's laid out for us due to the uh, deposition of sediment at the bottom of oceans uh, that is preserving these, these fossils for us. Okay, so that is one piece of evidence for evolution. Um, one of the pieces of evidence that you can really see quite clearly is uh, homologous structures, or homology of, of, uh, of anatomy, homology, right? Um, so if you look here to the left, you're going to see you have some carpal bones right here. Wrist, you have these phalange bones over here. You have uh, radius and ulna here in this cat, right? And the same with the human. Same with the horse. You have similar bones. They may not serve the same purpose. If you look at this bat wing, you're going to probably see some webbing here. Um, this is made for flying, but you can definitely see these similar structures, and they have these bones share kind of a common ancestor. Same with the bird here. You have kind of these deformed bones at the end of their of their wings, um, which help them to fly. You know, they have a wing that forms off of here, right? They have some sort of wing. But the basic bone structure in a bird and a whale and a cat and a bat and a horse and human and many, 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 many other organisms is very similar, right? You can even go through and count the bones and see that in some cases they're very, very similar. Um, 
So this is homology, or sometimes referred to as homologous structures. Homologous structures. These are, uh, I guess we can call them pieces of anatomy. Pieces of anatomy that suggest a common ancestor, that suggest a common ancestry. Due to their similarity. Right? Um, these are homologous structures. So, I will also want to talk very briefly about analogy. Not the English form, but although you can think of it that way. Um, and analogous structures. Analogous structures. These are, ah, features of an organism. that have a similar function, but do not suggest um, an evolutionary relationship. So I'll give you some examples of that. Over here we have a the wing of a moth, right, or butterfly. I'm not sure what that is. Um, we have a pterodactyl wing right here. We have a bird right here. We have a bat right here. Now, obviously, they have homologous structures in these phalange bones, right? There is some homology between these, specifically these three over here. But these structures themselves, these wings, they, they, they operate differently, right? Although they serve the same purpose. For instance, here a bird has a bunch of feathers, right? This bat has webbing between its phalanges. Uh, that gives it light. This pterodactyl has webbing as well between this one really long phalange uh, and the rest of its arm. Um, this insect has a completely different method for flight, right? It doesn't even have phalanges in, that, in the sense that these creatures do. Um, so as you can see, they have a similar purpose, right? These are all flyers. They've evolved separately to fly. However, this, this aspect of their anatomy does not suggest common ancestry. So I don't want you to get confused and think, oh, they don't share a common ancestor. They're not related. Yes, they're obviously related. However, um, the, the actual function uh, is very different between these. The it's, it's function's the same, but it's, it operates very differently. Birds have feathers. Um, the bat has this kind of webbing. Pterodactyl has this, this tissue here between this phalanges, and this, this moth does not have that. Uh, it has a completely different set of paper thin wings here, right? Um, so these are analogous structures that although you may look at them at first and go, oh, hey, bird and bat, they probably evolved the same way. They're actually quite different. They're actually quite different. So it's just something to, uh, to keep in mind when we talk about homologous structures. Um, also, I would like to take a moment and talk about vestigial structures. Vestigial structures. See if I can write this more neatly over here. Erase it. Okay. So let me write this kind of more neatly down here. That's kind of a weird word. Stigial structures. Right? These are structures that have lost anatomical structures. that no longer, no longer function for their original purpose. The thing of these is evolutionary relics, right? The common example we have is the, uh, the, the whale vestig has a vestigial pelvis. It has a structure, cluster of bones in here. That used to be the pelvic region for some creature. However, this whale has kind of, uh, does not have any need for these bones. They kind of sit connected to, you know, not much in the body. They don't operate in any sense. They don't do anything. However, 
evolutions, there is no pressure to, to, for this to be removed from an evolutionary perspective. So it kind of, it, you know, it kind of retains this, right? In humans, you can think of some uh, structures such as the appendix. It's considered a vestigial organ. Uh, the tailbone, tailbone in humans. These are both uh, examples of humans of uh, what we would consider vestigial structures. Okay, um, so I'm going to go ahead and call it, call it right there for this video. We will continue this, this uh, discussion in the next video. Thank you for watching.